scriptures, and I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah, the 37th chapter, and I'm going to look at ooh, verses, I believe, yes, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Isaiah 37, and um, don't say that, keep going. Um, the assurance of God's deliverance. I want to talk about the, the assurance of God's deliverance. It's certain, the assurance of God's deliverance. So Isaiah 37, I'm picking it up from the King, New King James reading, and he says, and so it was that when King Hezekiah heard it, that he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Elikam, who was over the household, Shepna, and the scribe and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth and ashes, sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Emmaus. And they said to him, thus said Hezekiah, this day is a day of trouble, rebuke, and blasphemy, for the children have come to birth, but there is no strength to bring forth. Verse 4 of Isaiah 37, and it may be the Lord your God will hear the words of Ramshak, whom the master of the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, has sent to reproach the living God and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer to the remnant that is left. The assurance of God's deliverance. Lift up your prayer to the remnants, to the remnant or those that were left are those that survived COVID. Those that survived and came back to church. Those that survived and did not write church off because COVID showed us that we could have church online. Let me straighten out one scripture in its New Testament. The Bible says that you need that no man teach you. He was not talking about a preacher or a minister, one that gives you knowledge from the word of God. He was talking about them avoiding false doctrine and heresy that they were teaching them. He said, you don't need anybody to teach you that. In other words, I have a hard enough time being right. I don't need you to teach me how to do wrong. I don't need anybody to help me practice doing wrong when I'm trying all I can to do right. That's what you do not need a man to teach you. Remnant that shall survive. We're in, we're in a, a difficult time and what a difference a day make. This text points out that it was a day of trouble. It was a day of rebuke. It was a day of blaspheming and, and weakness because they could not bring, bring forth. Yet there was deliverance in the house of the Lord. And that's where we want to bring ourselves back to. The house of the Lord. This 37th chapter in verse 35, for I will defend this city, says the Lord, to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Do you know that God is fighting for you? He is defending you to save you and to save me and to save this city. The assurance of God's deliverance the psalmist says it like this in 59 and 9. He said, because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. He is my defense. I'm going to wait on him. I haven't found anybody that can fight like God. He is just, he is just amazing. He will call wind and water and rain and sand. He will take a breath from someone and say, don't touch my anointing and do my prophet and my servant no harm. One of my old cliches, somebody have never heard it, so let me say it. Hold on, wait a minute, let Jesus in it. You quit fighting, step back and tag Jesus in. I need five folk to bring your hands up and say, Jesus, you in it. Every now and then you have to step back and quit fighting foolish things. Only thing you can do with a foolish thing is let that foolish thing go. 
because it's going to make you look like a foolish thing if you keep dealing with a foolish thing. God is always humbling us and bringing us to the state of prayer to seek his face and his presence. Humility is having or showing modesty of one's own importance. You're not all that. What you are is by the grace of God that you are. You're cute, but we can find somebody cuter. You're handsome, we can find somebody handsomer. You're rich, but we can find somebody richer. It's always somebody better than the better and the next, but then nobody is perfect. It's the spirit of humility that we, we must gather and we see in the text this morning. As we humble ourselves before the Lord with prayer and fasting, he will exalt us in due times. That's 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6. 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6. He said, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, uh, the power of God. At the, at the right time, he will lift you back up to honor. See, the picture in this context in Hezekiah's writing, in Isaiah's writing about Hezekiah in Isaiah 37 and verse 1, the king Hezekiah had sent Elkim and Shepni, the scribe, the elders of the priests, unto the house of the Lord with sackcloth on. Sackcloth was a sign of humility and mourning. And the ashes came from the dirt or the ashes from a fire. They threw them upon their head, ripping their garments to show a spirit of mourning. The king had also took off his kingly robe and put on sackcloth or grave or mourning clothes, putting on ashes on his head. The assembly here shows the leaders, the priests, the elders, and all of those are the picture of mourning and humility. It's a time when you have to humble yourself before God, not for people, for them to see that you're mourning because they can't help you. You're doing this to get God's attention. That's why he says when you fast, don't make it a public notification that you, I'm fasting. It's only been two hours. <laughs> Call me after eight hours. I'm still going through. <laughs> you want sympathy that, and they'll give it to you. And the Bible says you have your reward. You want people to, to be sorry for you? I'm going to buy you something to eat when you get off your fast. Then you have your reward. But I'm not fasting to get a burger or a salad or a meal. I need the assurance of God's deliverance that he will bring me through it. The leadership poised themselves in the position of humility. And as they went into the house of the Lord, there they began to pray. And in this place, they leave out of the house of the Lord and King Hezekiah sends them down to the prophet Isaiah. As they go to Isaiah the prophet, you can only imagine how we felt when they walked in and said, what is going on? Why are you looking so deployed and down? Because we just got some bad news. And this bad news came from Sennacherib. His assignment was to come and destroy Judah, and destroy Hezekiah and Jerusalem and Judah. He wanted them wiped out. The 36th chapter, read through there, it's amazing how he begins to boast himself. So naturally, I'm like, have you all heard about me and all that I have done? I can destroy things. But what he had not heard about was God's people. They were already come through Pharaoh's camp. So they were not easily to be destroyed. Help me preach a little bit. Tell somebody, I'm a desert baby. I don't go down that hard. I don't go down that easy. Desert children are not like normal children. You're tried in a hard, hot place, and you made it through a desert, so surely you can make it through a wilderness. When God understands who you are and how he proposed you and how he apostled you, then you can make it through most anything. This threatening news was sad for Hezekiah to pick up and to hear. He tore his clothes because he heard the news. Here we now we see that he sets a picture before us that you cannot just surrender to bullying, especially by the devil. He's been talking all his time about what he's going to do. But God told Job, I will only let him do what I allow him to do. He can't bully you past what I have assigned him to do. He threatens here, Sennacherib, saying that I'm going to destroy your people. I'm going to destroy you. 
Hezekiah here now is one of the greatest kings that we see in pictures of us. He brought back worship to the house of the Lord. He, did, he was a reformer within his own right. He understood that people had gotten away from God, but he was trying to bring them back on track. Let them see and understand that God has a kingdom purpose for them, even in this threat that's coming up against them. Understanding this grace that was on Hezekiah's life, that God was going to use him, it does not, did not, did not dismiss him from attacks or assignment of the enemy. But the assurance of God's deliverance that you got to be in a fight to be delivered. You have to be going through something for God to deliver you. The warfare of the enemy here was a kind of warfare that was somewhat of an awing to Hezekiah. Yet God promised to help and he sends his angel protection to bring victory for Hezekiah. Here we see now that Hezekiah, despite this Assyrian threat, Hezekiah put his trust in the Lord and believe what the prophet told him in Isaiah 37 and verse 6. Do not be afraid of the words which you have heard and which the servant of the king of Assyria has blasphemed me. See, here's the problem with the devil. He don't even know it yet. He starts messing with you, but then he's trying to find out what's holding you up. And as soon as he gets through messing with you and start messing with what's holding you up, the fight switches. You get out the way and God's, oh, he's talking about me now. You, you're talking about my children, and that's one thing. But when you start talking about me, then it's between me and you. And when it becomes between me and you, you can't win. You're fighting a losing battle. There is no way you're going to beat me because my track record is short. And just because you start talking about me and putting it on me, I'm going to get the victory and give it to my children. God does unique things and does unconventional ways of deliverance. God does not want us to operate out of fear. He told him, he said, don't fear. Timothy tells us this also in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. This spirit of fear is something that God does not want you or me operating out of. You cannot operate in fear and faith at the same time. You cannot operate in trust and doubt at the same time. A double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. Let them think they'll receive nothing from the Lord. Trusting God is the thing we must do. And putting our trust in him, that when we trust him, then all things are possible to them that believe. You see, the enemy's attack is when something is birthing or something is in conception. He tries to attack and wants to destroy it before it comes into fruition. God puts a call on your life. The enemy brings fear that you cannot fulfill the call. But it's not you fulfilling the call, it's the one that called you that fulfilled the call. He wants to bring fear before that thing gets birth, before it comes into the perfect reception or come about the progress of what it really is supposed to be. The seed is there, but the potential is hid within the seed. But the enemy now is to attack it before it gets going. The promise here is in the vision. It is also in your dreams. It's in your hopes. It's in whatever you expect better out of your life to become. God has given you the word for something better out of your life. So the enemy comes and says, it'll never happen because it didn't happen for him. And he'll even send people to say, it will never happen because it didn't happen for them. But if you don't allow fear to stop you from believing, it will come to pass. The assurance is in God's deliverance. There's always been an internal dialogue in our minds that we're wondering, is it going to happen? The internal dialogue helps you if we're in a derision and you want to stop going after it, hinders you and tries to distract you as you do not want to reach your full destiny of better. Better is on your mind, but here comes the internal dialogue. Ain't nobody in your family ever had nothing. Nobody in your family ever finished anything. Nobody in your family went to college or became anything. But you tell that devil, I will be the first. If nobody else is going to do it, then I got to be the first that would buy a home, that would do something greater and better for my life. Better is coming out of this. This is my God moment, and I see God in it. And the assurance is in the victory that God will bring about. 
it almost reminds me of Joseph and his brothers. You meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for my good. There are some, there are some very unsavory people that can do some unsavory stuff. You got to take that unsavory stuff, give it to God, and somehow he mixed it all up and said, all this is going to work together for the good. I'm going to tell you who your real friends are. I'm going to tell you who's with you no matter what. 100 all the way through when I can mix it all up and make it work for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Come on, Clinton. It's too quiet in here. You got to get to the text. The Assyrians were so just, just, just ruthless. They wanted to strike fear that would leave a lasting impact on God's people. This empire was strengthened by their soldiers and their warriors. They had this thing that they would have these chariots of, of, of war chariots with horses. Most men fought them with foot soldiers. The chariots of weapons were a mass destruction. So their track record was good when they told, uh, told, the, told the, the servants, or those told the men of God, the priests and the Levites, that I'm gonna destroy you all because they had destroyed everyone else. Their formidable power that they had in Tim you and makes you feel like there's nothing going to come out of this but destruction. But David had to face a giant that was too big for him. But he says, I come in the name of the Lord. I want to help somebody quickly this morning that is not bigger than your God if it's bigger than you. And if it's not bigger than your God, then what you got to do is magnify the Lord with me and let's exalt his name together. Don't let the devil say, you overwhelmed. No, devil, you overwhelmed. Because what holding me is about to wipe you out. It's this giant of a thing that makes us feel that it's not going to take place. Here is the Bible speaks to us in Psalms 20 and 7. Psalm David writes here and clarifies this, this Assyrian chariots. He says, Psalm trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in their money. Some trust in what they have accomplished. Some trust in what they have acquired in life. But I'm going to put my trust in the name of the Lord. Money will go. Things will go. Life can go crazy. But the name of the Lord abides forever. No matter what you do, don't ever take your trust factor off the name of the Lord. God always likes to show up, church, in unequal places. When your back is against the wall and you don't know how you're going to come out of this, God says, now I'm about ready to show up, but I still see you still trying to do it yourself. So I'm going to wait just a few more hours for you really to understand only way you're coming out of this is by me. Oh, help me preach just a few minutes and give God a coming out praise. I thank you for bringing me out. Today, 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 whatever formidable and intimidating force is opposing you, whatever is standing against you, odd, and trying to wipe you out, I pray and I decree deliverance in the name of Jesus. The assurance of this deliverance is in the house of the Lord. Overwhelming by some things, but I'm going back to the house. The Bible says in this 37th chapter, in verse 1, covered in sackcloth, they went back Back to the house and came to the people's prayer. Mm -hmm. They went on in there and began to pray and began to seek God's face about what they were going through. It was such a bad picture because in the 37th chapter, verse 1 to 3, he said it was a great jeopardy going on. Weak and tired, she was trying to bring forth, but she couldn't bring forth. Hezekiah picks up a thought of a woman in a delivery stage. Do you see your life in a delivery stage? The devil couldn't stop the conception. It almost shut up. He couldn't stop the, even the trimesters of what God was bringing you to. Now you're about to deliver and the devil said, quit and give up. I'm too close. Oh God, high five. Somebody said, this is my push season. I got to preach this like I'm feeling it. This is the season where I can't go back. I got to go on and push. If I don't push, then something will happen to the baby, my dream, my vision, my hope, and something will happen to me. But if I push, then maybe God will bring something out of all this the assurance of God's deliverance 
assurance of God's deliverance. Great jeopardy. I don't know how this is going to happen, but I'm going to push till it come. I'm going to push till it come about. I'm going to push till I see that family life center. I'm going to push till I saw this gym. I push till I saw the NPR. I push till I came out of Durango High School. I push before I left off of Yale Street. And I came this far. Oh, God, I feel something say push and get to the next level. If you ain't going to push, don't pull me back, baby. I didn't get through too much to get to where I am. If you're not going to push, get out. Trouble. Trouble everywhere. Time of release is coming. Judah has been called to poise as a woman in travail. And she's at the place where she's about to deliver. He tells Hezekiah, I've been trying to get you all to come back to me for 35 chapters. But now it's time for you to break up, wake up and understand it's only going to happen with me and not without me. The assurance of your deliverance of whatever you're going to go through is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that's going to bring you out and pull you through. He said, go tell. As Hezekiah sends the men down to Isaiah. Isaiah sends the word back to Hezekiah and tell them, tell your master, don't fear. I don't want you fearing now. It looks very bad, but don't don't fear. You're too close to fear. I need you to faith right about now. Believe me that it will come to pass. This man of Assyria is reviling me now. He's talking about me. So now it's a personal thing. What I'm going to do with him in Isaiah 37 and 7, I'm going to send a spirit down there where he's at and send a blast of wind of noise. And that wind of noise is going to confuse him about what's really going on. God is a way of using the elements of things to get the enemy off your back. Do you know he's been sending blasts of winds all around you? The devil's been trying to get close. God, he said, no, I don't want you touching her today, this week. I got to deliver her because she trusts me to deliver. You don't see it, but you, you hear it going by you. Every now and then you get in a financial rut and all, God sends another wind by you. Sometimes you're all by yourself sick in the house and God sends another wind by you. A few days ago, I'm getting up out the bed. I get out the bed and everything, Dr. Francis, began to spin. I said, whoa, I sat back down. I said, what's going on? I stood up again. I said, whoa, what's going on? I said, well, let me see if this thing work. In the name of Jesus, Father, I need you to straighten this body out. Something's not right. I called my nutritionist. She said, you got a form of verticals. I don't want no verticals. Vertical. I don't need that right now. She said something is, attack, is attacking your body. I said, Oh, I'm about yeah, shit. I'm about to give birth. So the devil's trying to now bring fear, say it'll never come to pass. Oh, I passed that thing on, got myself together, start eating right again, and got my act together. And before I know it, I'm on the other side. I said, Lord, what was all that about? I was trying to show you, Clinton, my assurance is in deliverance. But you gotta be in something for me to deliver you out of it so you would know you can't talk about what you can't talk about. You can't preach about what you can't preach about. Anybody in this room know God will deliver. He will. What's that, Lord? I told you, Sinatra Rap is not going to bother you. What are you doing, Lord? I'm sending one angel I wish you knew your Bible. I'm sending one angel to mess with this bully and all his army. The Bible says one angel took out 185,000 men in one night. When the rest of them woke up the next day, they ran back home. So Natural sons killed him in his own house. The assurance of God's delivery is coming through an angel. God said, I'm going to send out a free enforcement. I got your back. I'm not going to let the devil bully you around anymore. I'm covering you by my power and by my anointing. I'm sending reinforcement. I I said, Lord, why didn't you come? He said, if I come, I'll wipe it all out. But I sent an angel, and that angel's watching over you. It's the assurance of my deliverance. I decree and declare everything that you want from God, it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. 
swing around and tell three people. I'm sending reinforcements to back up my word. I got you covered. I got you covered. Sun shall not smite you by day, not the moon by night. Ten thousand will fall by your side. It will not come nigh your dwelling. Sickness got to go. Doubt got to go. Fear got to go. Your help is in the name of the Lord. Take one neighbor's hands that did not tell you, it'll be all right. God told me to tell you, it'll be all right. God told me to let you know, it's gonna be all right. It's already all right. It's gonna get nothing but better. Shout in this house. God, I feel that thing. Swing around and tell three more people. For your hands up, Father, we bless you in this house. Thank you for not causing the threat to make me run, but to go back into the house of the Lord, humble myself in sackcloth and ashes, and seek your face. The text never said that Isaiah prayed. I don't see, but I know he gave a word. Be not afraid. God is fighting for you. He's going to defend you. I want to speak before I close this morning to that spirit of stress. I rebuke that spirit of stress. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I lift that thing up off of you. You don't need to carry that load. God did not design you to carry that load. Cast your cares upon him. Because he cares for you. Stress, I command you to go. I will not lose any more sleep over what I can't fix. God is in your hands. You promise never to leave me. You promise to be my help in the time of trouble. I'm in it right now. And I'm stressing. I'm going to start doubting. I'm going to start disbelieving. But today I switch. I turn it around in the name of Jesus. And I claim my victory. I claim my help back. In the name of Jesus. I know I'm praying to somebody right now, but I need you to demonstrate your victory. If you're going after it, if you're going after it, that stress is gone, 
I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you to start clapping your hands and stomping your feet. Say, I'm going to get my joy back. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Break yourself free. I'm going to get my peace back. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to get it all back. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. Go get it, girl. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it, man. Go get it. Go get it. Rush. This is your push season. Go get it. 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 Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Father, I thank you. I was praying over everybody, but I, was, I know I was praying to somebody. If that was you, just begin to shake your hands like there it goes. Let it, let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Not on my watch. Not in my house. I'm not going to let these kids stretch me out. I'm not going to let this job stress me out. I already raised my kids. I'm not going to let no I need my peace back in the name of Jesus. Hold your hands up. If it's you, say, Lord Jesus, this job is in your hands. I'm not dealing with this drama. I'm a daughter of Abraham, a daughter, a man of faith. I'm a child of God. I cast it on you in Jesus' name. Satan. Leave my family alone, my wife alone, my kids alone, and leave me alone. You got it? <laughs>